Hello, I'm Deidre Berger, Director of the AJC Berlin Raymer Institute. I'm speaking today with Eldad Beck, who is a correspondent here in Berlin for Yehudiot Avonot, and he has been covering for many years European-Israeli affairs, and Eldad, you have been covering the Oslo Accords for a long time when they happened and the, the consequences thereof. September 13, 1993, the Oslo Accords were signed on the White House. And since then, we've had many ups and downs, but there still are not two states living next to each other. There was such a euphoria, the handshake between Yasser Arafat and Yitzhak Rabin at the White House lawn. Was this a realistic dream, even at the time? I think that it was, um, it was a very dramatic moment for many people living in the Middle East and well beyond it, but especially to those who are um, mainly uh, concerned by the conflict, the Israelis, the Palestinians, and those living in Arab countries around us. Um, I think that um, at that moment something that was um, unthinkable uh, only a few months before happened and uh, it had an effect like the uh, visit of Sadat to Jerusalem, uh, which means a dramatic change, a dramatic event taking place, showing to people that uh, a change on the ground is possible and that enemies can uh, meet together and shake hands. However, I think that um, beyond the dramatic of the event, um, the main problem was that um, people of the region um, got used to a certain theater politics, which means that um, instead of realizing that processes, especially peace processes between nations that had have uh, a very problematic uh, past, must uh, take time. Uh, everybody was more or less sure that um, the problem between the Israelis and the Palestinians would be solved in a matter of months. And there has been, at the time, indeed, a mechanism which uh, tried to bring both sides to very rapid agreements that people would see change on the ground. Um, however, um, it did not, this mechanism did not deal with the deepest real problems of the conflict uh, in the Middle East, especially between Israelis uh, and Palestinians, but also between Arabs and Israelis. And I would mainly uh, point out now the problem of peace education. At no point has there been on the Palestinian and Arab side um, any real pedagogical work which was um, aimed at raising up young generation accepting uh, the existence of Jews in the Middle East and of Israel as a Jewish state in the Middle East. As you point out, there was a very detailed timeline, in fact, to achieve the ultimate goals. And everyone knew it couldn't go so quickly. But there was a lack of preparation, perhaps on both sides. What else went wrong, do you think, that 20 years later we're still not where everyone hoped to be that fall day on the White House lawn? Um, I would say that, um, unfortunately, the, um, the whole implementation was lacking seriousness on both sides. I think that on the Palestinian side, the Palestinian leadership under Yasser Arafat um, has not really forsaken the um, idea of getting rid of Israel and was uh, looking at the Oslo Agreement as part of the uh, gradual uh, process that they were looking for uh, into uh, annihilating uh, the State of Israel. Uh, a, a, a strategy that they've decided upon in uh, 1974 already. On the Israeli side, I think that um, there was a very paternalistic attitude of uh, those leading the process, mainly um, 
Shimon Peres and his uh, men, and probably also of, uh, but to a lesser degree, of uh, Yitzhak Rabin, um, an attitude which consisted on saying, we know how things should be, we know how things should be done by you, Palestinians, let us explain to you uh, how you should act. Instead of really looking into what the Palestinians were doing and reacting to it. So we came to a very dramatic situation in which the Palestinians were not moving into the application of the peace uh, process and the peace agreements. Uh, for example, until today, the Palestinian Charter, which calls for the destruction of the State of Israel, was not annulled, although it was one of the main points of the, the agreement. Um, take along official statements of uh, Palestinian uh, officials um, hinting to the fact that uh, they are still looking for the liberation of Palestinian territories which are Israel today um, and uh, taken also into the point the very dangerous game that uh, the PLO was playing with uh, Hamas letting the Hamas actually take over the ground uh, in order to radicalize the situation and then to pretend that he doesn't have any other choice but not to do certain things because he didn't have the uh, legitimacy to do them. So there were many steps along the way where the implementation was not followed. One can ask how serious the intentions were in fact really to follow this. Nonetheless, there was something that moment 20 years ago that allowed these hopes to, to come together and for an agreement to be made. Today we again have peace talks that started several weeks ago. Is there any way to, to somehow recapture some of the spirit of Oslo? Or did so many things go wrong that there's no looking back? I think that many things indeed went wrong. But uh, it would be a mistake to uh, give up uh, the hope uh, of a possibility to repair those mistakes. However, in order to repair those mistakes, someone has to sit down and to point out what mistakes were done. And unfortunately, I do not think that until today such an effort was done by anybody, including the outside um, entities that are uh, busy with trying to promote the uh, peace process, which are the American administration or the Quartet or the, the uh, European Union. I think that if you really want to um, have give peace a chance in the Middle East, you cannot just take three problems like the refugees, Jerusalem and eventually the borders and say that once these problems are solved, everything will be okay. Um, I think that a larger uh, strategy towards promoting the idea of peace in the Middle East among the peoples and nations of the Middle East is crucial. And as long as, you know, take the medias for example. The medias have been playing a very negative role in the last 20 years, especially on the Arab side. Nothing has been done in order to, in order to stop it. And um, it includes also states that have officially peace agreements with Israel, like Egypt and Jordan. Nobody is doing anything to stop the, uh, the, the hatred which is spread by these medias. Um, so, peace can have a chance, a certain chance in the Middle East, only if a global approach to the problem would finally be defined by all the parties involved and then it has to be gradual, it will take time. I think that maybe one of the main lessons that we have to learn is that um, we don't need dramas, um, we just need a process, a really serious on-the-ground process. And um, yeah, moving on that direction I think would be very, very important. Thank you. Elda Beck, 20 years after the Oslo Treaty was signed, lessons to be learned to, that could help the current peace process. Thank you for joining us. I'm Deidre Berger, Director of the AJC Berlin Bremer Institute.